Hi, everyone, and thanks for the introduction. I'm going to hopefully speak about uh, the detection of a single photon in microwave domain using Josephson Junction. OK, this work was done in collaboration between the Department of Physics of University of Salerno in Italy and the Italian National Institute of Nuclear Physics, where I'm currently a fellow. And through the same project, SIM stands for Single Microwave Photon Detection. So the main goal of this work was to design an ultra-sensitive detector of weak electromagnetic signal based on current bias Josephson junction and the statistical theoretical analysis that we perform here through numerical simulation allow us to provide uh, a range of uh, the Josephson junction parameters that are best suited to detect these weak microwave uh, signals. So. The detection of such a signal has large number of application. For instance, in the dark, uh, dark matter with action search, it, it has been proven that uh, in a region where there is a strong electromagnetic field, the action decays as a photon that can be detected. This is actually one of the main motivation of this same project. And another application is, is in quantum computing, with uh, especially uh, the readout on the control of uh, the qubit. And also, and also in Homeland Security, uh, we can clearly see in this Homeland Security that the infrared techniques and other techniques emerging system uh, may not be able to give us a clear view or a clear image of uh, maybe a weapon, a concealed weapon device. So a microwave that will help to detect uh, for this uh, concealed weapon device, since in microwave region, uh, the microwaves can penetrate under the clothing and give us uh, a clear view of uh, the hidden device, the hidden weapon device. Okay, so why using the Zofson Junction? I'm pretty sure most of us here are well aware of uh, what is the Zofson Junction. I'm just gonna recall it quickly. So the Zofson Junction is a device that consists of two superconductors separated by, separated by a region that may be an insulator or a normal metal. So these are the equation of the Zofson Junction. And as a radiation detector, the Zofson Junction are extremely sensitive to very weak signal. Since uh, they can reach very high response close to the quantum limit. And also the Jason junction operate at very low temperature and the noise can be reduced as well. And another interesting feature is that the Jason junction are extremely fast element and can easily operate in the microwave up to the hundred of TRS frequency. The model that I chose for this work is the well-known resistively capacitive shunted junction, as we can see in the figure here. As the detection of a single photon calls for a realistic model, one is supposed to have a coupling between the Josephson junction and the electromagnetic uh, resonator, that is the cavity absorbing the photon. But for this work, I made simplifications that both the resonator and that the junction are ideal. That is, each absorb, I suppose that each absorb photon is injected in the signal in the form uh, induced an electrical signal that is injected in the, in the system in the form of IS, as we can see in the figure here. So by using the Kirchhoff flow and from the equation of Josephson, uh, we use, we write the normalized equation that we're gonna use to do our, our analysis. And we also note uh, the noise system here, that is the ten minus here, since the noise is one of the crucial problem in the quantum technology. So, and the statistical property of the noise term are given as follow. So and to mimic the, 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 the arrival of a photon, we use this turn of current policies, as we can see in the figure here, where A is the amplitude of the signal, tau is the distance between two consecutive policies, and this time T is chosen large enough so that two wave packets will not interfere together. And T null is the time at which the first pulse arrive. And this time is randomly distributed between zero and a T. Now, how is the detection is 
operate, how is the operation of resuscitation, how is the resuscitation achieved? So we view our Josephson We view our Josephson as a device in which the Josephson phase particle is uh, trapped in one of the well of the potential. So at zero bias current, the particle is eventually trapped in one of the well of the potential. Where we increase the bias current, the, the, the potential well is tilted and at a value close to the critical current, the particle escape from the well and this escape mechanism can happen through uh, the thermal activation or the Markov's quantum tunneling. So basically, we suppose at the initial moment of time, the junction is biased with uh, a DC current in the zero voltage state. So the absorption of a photon, as I said, I suppose that each absorbed photon produces an accelerated current signal that can change the state of the system by switching in for the finite voltage state to uh, from, from the zero voltage state to the finite voltage state. This is basically how the system uh, is, is, is the, the detection of the, the photon is achieved. So in this context of uh, signal detection, one is interested to know whether or not the system, uh, the signal has been detected. So for that, we bias the junction at the, at the initial state, the junction is biased. And when the system is disturbed, either by the presence of uh, a noise or by the presence of the signals, we record a switching from the superconducting to the voltage state. So, and this switching is actually the time at which the Josephson junction passes from the, 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 resist, the, the, the voltage state, the zero voltage state to the resistive state. So we repeat this experiment many times, n times, in such a way, we can construct a distribution of uh, these switching times that can be represented in the form of histogram, as we can see here. And we note that uh, H1 is the hypothesis when the escape are induced by thermal noise only. And uh, H1 is the hypothesis when the escape are induced by the joint action of the noise and the arrival of the signal on the system. So, and uh, to decide between these two hypotheses, one plays a threshold that reflects on alpha and beta where alpha is the probability of false alarm. That is the detection of a photon while the switchings are, are, are induced by the thermal activations. And beta is the probability of missing the signal. That is the photons are not detected and they are confused into the thermal activation. So the noise and the, 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 the signal are confused. The detection, so the lower are alpha and beta this quantity, the beta is our detection. To make this more understandable, more quantitative, and to make this analysis more understandable or more quantitative, we introduce a statistical index, the DKC, the Kuma Carroll index, that is actually an estimator of the signal to noise ratio. And uh, the DKC basically compares the distribution of the switching times the mean switching times when there is the signal is present on the system with the source script one here and the distribution of the mean switching times when there is no signals. So one assume that for a reasonable result, the DKC has to be greater or equal to one. That's actually what we are gonna to use to decide if our, system, our signal has been detected. Uh, now on, I'm gonna show some results that we get from this analysis. So here, this figure here shows for two different value of noise amplitude, the mean switching times as a value of bias current. Since we want to design the junction, what can be the parameter of the junction that we're gonna to use to design our junction. So from the analysis, we plot uh, the mean switching times as a function of bias current for two different value of noise amplitude. And also for different value of the signals. We started from when there is no signal, that is represented by the solid dash line, so the solid blue dash line here, as we can see, and we evolve with uh, some other values of the, si the signal amplitude. So, and we observe that for only the case when the signal is not present, we place a threshold, the gamma Kramer, above which the thermal fluctuation, uh, the, 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 yeah, the thermal fluctuation causes the switch. That below this uh, threshold. We have a saturation, this plateau that's observed here. That means 
thermal noise alone cannot cause the switch. The same observation is observed when we slightly increase the noise amplitude. And we also observe this saturation of the maximum of the observation time here by the plateau. And uh, at this region, there are no switch records. And we're going to see that further. Uh, now, when we increase, when we add the system, the, sorry, the signal onto the system, when the, sig the, the signal arrives in the system, what happened? Uh, just, I will just explain for one curve since the dynamics is basically the same for all the curves. So when we are at this region of noise amplitude, again, we have this plateau. That means uh, the average switching time saturate at the maximum of observation time here. So no switchings are recorded at this low bias current value, at this region of the bias current. When we increase slightly, we have uh, a region where each pulse can induce the switchings. And another region that we observe here is the region where only the first pulse can induce the switchings. Why? Because uh, the first pulse arrive at a time randomly distributed between zero and T. And this, since our T is kind of 1000, we have here basically 500 here. So that's why uh, this region is the region where only the first pulse can induce the switchings. And a high bias current, we have basically a switching that occurs before the arrival of the, the first pulse. Uh, now, increasing noise amplitude, we observe again basically same dynamic, the plateau we see here. But another interesting case that we see here is that at low amplitude of signal, the mean switching times and at low bias current, the mean switching times overlap. There's an overlapping between the mean switching time when there is no signal and the mean switching times when the signal is present. So that means uh, the noise and the signal are confused. That's actually where we need a DKC since here it is hard to see whether or not the signal has been detected. So the DKC, as I previously mentioned, compares the distribution between the mean switching times when the signal is present and the mean switching times when there is no signal. So for that, we plot uh, the dependence of the DKC as function of bias current for different value, again, of the amplitude of signal. And we see that uh, for this case here, at low bias current, the DKC is null, it vanishes since we have no, because of the plateau we observe here, there are no switching records that confirms, the DKC confirms all this uh, analysis, this observation that we made before, that the DKC is null here, that means there's no switchings recorded here. Now, when we increase the bias current, the DKC also increase and reach a, a value that is basically higher than one. As we can, as, as I said before, we assume for a good uh, uh, detection, we have uh, one should have uh, the DKC greater than one. And uh, increasing the noise, we basically observe the same dynamic. But for the case, if you remember at uh, this case here, where the, DK, uh, the, the mean switching times when there is no signal, the blue dashed line curve and the red curve are confused. So analyzing the DKC, we observe that we have kind of some maxima that we see here. And that means uh, the signal can still be detectable. So to improve this statistic, this statistic analysis, we increase the number of observation, the of repetition of experiments. So we repeat experiment more than what was as what that was previously mentioned. That means uh, we start with 10, 1,000, and then we increase to 10,000. The number of experiment that we do, the number of time we do the experiment, and we observe that we have we clearly have two value of bias current, the low and high value of the bias current of the junction. That might be good for to perform our detection. So to end up with this work. Uh, we show that the detection of this microwave photon play an important role in some areas such as action detection or in quantum computing. And we also show that by using a kuma caro index, that is an estimate of the signal to noise ratio, we help to investigate the performance of our detection by vary the parameter of the system and also the analysis of the switching times and the statistical interpretation allow us to detect a signal with small amplitude from what the expecting determinist approach. Okay, these are the collaborators involved in this work from the University of Salerno and also the Italian National Institute of Nuclear Physics. 
And these are some of the work we publish in this work. Okay, thanks for, for listening. Of course, if you have any questions, I'm um, available to answer some of them. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, okay, if there are any questions, then uh, please use chat to write if you have any. You were actually mentioning that there is an application for, for this homeland security. This is always the, you know, the kind of, uh, uh, I would say the most uh, engaging because you can immediately understand this, this kind of application. And so you are saying that this, this kind of setup could be used in the actual detectors on, on, on the airports? Uh, like yeah. Some of the work has been published also in this way they clearly uh, sorry if I can share again the screen to show that images here. Uh, here, some of this, unlike uh, this uh, visible or uh, infrared techniques, here at microwaves, the microwaves the device with the microwaves uh, range of frequency can penetrate the clothing, can penetrate the clothing as we can see as see here and give a clear a clear image of the hidden weapon. This also gives us kind of a clear image of this of this hidden weapon. Uh, also, the the thermal contrast of some objects are different. That's why some of the time it's, it might be easy to hide some of these devices if uh, the, 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 the security system is equipped with uh, this uh, infrared or, or visible oh. imaging system. Okay, okay, but you know, if you need superconductivity, it's always a question of, uh, of having a low temperature. How you would deal with this? I mean, I mean, so simply speaking, what is the size of the apparatus you need for this kind of device to, to work? Okay, for the superconducting system still on the investigation. So, of course, that's gonna be another, another. Uh, I didn't check that and in this way, but uh, the general idea is, is that so. Okay, okay. So there is another question: uh, Can this method be used in medical imaging? Uh, yeah, since the superconducting uh, devices are already using for the MRI as well with the squid device, the squid. Mm -hmm. is more or less the same uh the same idea the same yeah the same idea behind okay so basically you could uh, uh... this could improve so... maybe the detection of uh, a tumor something like that to locate precisely where it is in the body or uh, yeah Okay, and there is another question. How do you buy a JJ? How do I? I, I don't. I don't understand. Joseph the Junction Cooper pair, and how do you measure the quality of the Josephson, Josephson Junction itself? Uh, okay. How this? Okay. Uh, basically, he maybe he's referring about uh, the the experimental part of this work. Uh, didn't show that because it was done by another colleague. So, but we try to rebuild our Joseph Sandoval based on some of the findings that we got from this theoretical work, and uh, it kind of uh, give us some preliminary satisfying results. Since we are we are still working on that, the project has evolved now. We want to use it, as I said, to detect, still detect this kind of uh, for fundamental research for action to action search. Okay, so basically you're you're building this setup uh, at the moment. Yeah, yes? we are building the setup at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. I mean, this is uh, uh, this is nice. Uh, another question. Uh, in your circuit diagram, I could see the resistant R, and you said you could use Kirchhoff law for the coupling, but you didn't show us the Hamiltonian function. 
Yeah, since I didn't Someone is demand, for this, demanding Hamiltonian to be displayed. Yeah, for this work specifically, we did kind of semi-classical analysis. We didn't focus on the Hamiltonian since it was not necessary at that uh, moment. But what we are working on right now, uh, we have uh, basically this system that we all know. And uh, for that a complete set of the system, we need to do some kind of uh, more advanced so this is one of the backup slides I show. Yeah, this is the one of the complete set that we are working on right now. Uh, okay. So for this work, we didn't need to show to to work with the Hamiltonian Hamiltonian side. We the main idea was to prove first that we can use the Judson junction to infer the presence of uh, the signal when it's uh, confused with a uh, noise. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. It is really like I mean this kind of measurement and and uh, uh, so I think this is the the first talk was about measuring and the, the improving efficiency using quantum devices. Uh, yeah. Also, yeah. So I mean this is a very fascinating topic. I'm not a specialist in this area, but I, I can see that this is really a growing area of uh, of knowledge. And uh, thank you, thank you, Alex, once again. And okay, thank you again.